video, I'm going to be doing an unboxing and brief overview of the ROG Crosshair X870E Hero from ASUS. So this is kind of the highest-end motherboard from ASUS at the launch of the new X870E motherboards. These motherboards are meant to accompany the Ryzen 9000 series or the Zen 5 CPUs that launched a few months ago. It's kind of weird that they did not launch on the same day. I think those who wanted to buy these 9000 series CPUs, they were stuck either waiting for these or they were having to buy an older motherboard into a BIOS update. Not the best user experience, let's put it that way. So we're going to be looking at this. I'm just going to go ahead and open it up here. This is a very expensive motherboard. I feel like if you're looking for an ASUS board, they do have some pretty good options. I think the Strix is a very good choice. However, the competitors like MSI and ASRock have some very good competing options as well. So here's the motherboard in the box. Let's go ahead and take it out. All right, so just to kind of go over what's in here besides the motherboard, you do get some ROG stickers. So that's, they always kind of include that. And then we have... Motherboard technical updates. This is for Wi-Fi 7, the frequency bands, and the Bluetooth. And then there is a, what looks to be a quick start guide. So it is nice that they have that. It's actually colored too, which is interesting. Most motherboards nowadays don't even include any sort of paper manual. So it's nice to see kind of a small quick start guide. Not the full manual, but it is something. And then underneath here, you get four SATA cables. And then, I don't know what this is. This is like a, a spacer for an M.2 drive. Uh, this is the adjuster for the M.2 drive on the underside that goes to the motherboard. Looks like there's another one of those spacers. And then the Q-Connect. The Wi-Fi 7 and Bluetooth antenna. Adapter for M.2, another spacer. I guess this is if you were going to use, for example, your own M.2 heat sink and you weren't going, you would need to remove the thermal pad that's on the motherboard. I think you would probably put the spacer there instead. At least that's what I think that's for. And then you get a three pin RGB cable and a bunch of these things for the M.2. And then, uh, yeah, this. I don't see any screws, though. Oh, this is a bottle opener. So you get a bottle opener. This is like an ROG Pass card or something. And then more of that. So a bunch of that stuff. And then in here should be the USB drive for the chipset drivers and things. Oh, in the box, there's also, like, this handy thing that talks about the graphics card removal because they're not using the push button. I would have preferred if they kept the push button. It's funny, everybody, Asus was the first to do the push button for the quick disconnect on the GPU. Now everybody has that. They've figured out their own way of doing it uh, with their own patents to remove it, which I don't know if I like this. I feel like people who are not that good at building PCs might be at risk of damaging their graphics card or their PCIe slot if they are not doing this correctly. So I would prefer that they had to, they would have kept that button. Uh, now, this is, and this is the, like, the toolless installation for the M.2 drives. Okay, so this motherboard is quite heavy. You can see on the back, it has a full back plate. It's very shiny. It has that uh, LCD screen there. Six 10 gig Type A, two 40 gig USB 4 off of the Asmedia chipset, and then it has two additional 10 gig Type C, a 5 gig and a 2.5 gig LAN, Wi-Fi 7, and your audio, and then you have a BIOS flashback button, and then a clear CMOS and an HDMI. So it would have been nice to have gotten an additional two. I feel like they could have easily filled this in with two more Type A USBs. So a little bit underwhelming, uh, but overall, it's a very nice, clean aesthetic. Not too much RGB on this this version of the Hero, you know, it has the postcode up there. It has all the standard stuff. It has a PCIe 8 pin for the, I think, up to 60 watt charging off of the 20 gig USB-C that connects to the motherboard. One of the things that this motherboard has 
which I don't really understand why it has this, is Slim SAS. So it has Slim SAS, so you can run like an enterprise grade NVMe drive off of like a U.2 or something. But I feel like not a lot of people are going to use that. So I've, what they could have done differently, either they could have put a X4 PCIe slot, that's Gen 4 X4, to use the carbon from MSI as an example. They went with an X4 slot at the bottom of the motherboard instead of this weird Slim SAS. I say weird, it's not weird, but you know most consumers aren't going to find a use case for Slim SAS, but a lot of people could have benefited from an additional PCIe slot that does not share lanes with the GPU. So I feel like this is a kind of a strange choice from ASUS, uh, but it's, I guess if you're someone who's interested in getting this motherboard, you're probably looking at it for the overclocking functionality because it does have the dual, it, you can run the asynchronous mode with two separate E clocks or B clocks. So you can do B clock overclocking to help push to six gigahertz, for example, without affecting your RAM and your PCIe lanes and all that other stuff. So that is one of the things about this motherboard that kind of flies under the radar compared to a lot of other motherboards. Uh, but you are paying a premium for that feature. So I really feel like this is definitely more for the hardcore overclockers crowd, people who are going to do, you know, some kind of fancy overclocking, at least doing with like a, a custom loop or a 420 AIO or something like that. But overall, the Crosshair does have a legacy in terms of being kind of that overclockers board. It's been a while since I've had an Asus motherboard uh, in the consumer space. So the last time I had a Crosshair board, it was the X570 which I got way back in 2019 for the Ryzen 3000 series. So been away from Asus for a while. So now I'm kind of, I've come full circle. I've gone to like all the other motherboard brands. Now we're coming back to Asus this generation uh, when it seems like a lot of other people are kind of going the other way. So we'll see how this goes. Stay tuned for a full build video on the channel coming real soon.